Uh, <laughs> homosexuals, come join me. I, I'm ecstatic. Oh man, it is. It's something else when you just everything just hits. You know, you really just get in there, and I, I'm not gonna lie to you. I, it's it's one of those days where you've been thinking about that weight all week, all month, all year. This is the weight that you've been dreaming of. And to just make it absolutely fly means something else to me, truly. It, it, I, I, don't get me wrong. I came in pretty tired and did not even feel that great on my first couple warm-ups. But, dude, it's, it's, it's that difference when you can get yourself to that point where you know exactly what you need to do, you know exactly when you need to do it. It's just about accepting the now and actually committing, you know, and accepting what your body's capable of and just doing it. You know, there is, there cannot be a thought of failure. You know, you have to fully know and believe in your, in your head and your mental space, whatever you're doing today for whatever you're working toward, no matter how insignificant that weight or whatever you've been working on feels, you have to know you can succeed at it. And only after you fail, can you say, all right, let's give myself credit for what I did, learn from what I didn't, and just make that progress in the future. That's what that hopes for, you know? Oh my, oh, oh. It was different today. It was different. Especially, like I told you guys, like last week, I came off my sickness and had to do that little deload that wasn't even a true deload. I just was kind of messing around with some hard complexes that made me really lock my core in. And I am so happy to see that the weights are not only moving as good as last time I hit a heavy clean and jerk, but better than last time I hit a heavy clean and jerk. Because I've been putting more effort in my accessories to work on things that I'm actually not that great at, even though the weight's not that heavy and it feels like I should be doing more because of what I'm used to doing does not mean the, the progress and the relativity to the weights are not there, you know? And like, look at the other day. I tried out doing a push press uh, or a push jerk at the end of my clean and jerks instead of doing just strictly uh, split jerks that are all based off the momentum and locking out exactly when you need to. It's been a while since I've trained hitting that, you know, that perfect dip and drive to hit that real good middle mark to have the highest vertical uh, push through the top uh, because every time I do a split jerk, I can put that little bit extra weight on my front foot and restabilize immediately because the split jerk just is quite frankly easier than any of other uh, accessories when it comes to overhead cleaning jerk movements, you know, push jerk, push press, whatever. Um, any sort of pausing in the dip before you drive it back up, the split jerk will make it so much easier for you to pick up bad habits because it's so efficient in balancing the weight in such an awkward movement. It's so hard to push a weight from uh, off your delts behind your head. You know, that's the thing that people don't really think about where they just think it's like a military press where they just have to push it straight up, but it's not. It's more like a bench press that has like that J movement where you have to, you know, come forward a little bit and then drive that just, even by if it's just half an inch of movement, you still got to go that slight bit forward to go that slight bit back to really catch the momentum and have that actual balanced drive where your spine and the rest of your core can line up with it properly. And oh man, <laughs> for how shaky my core felt, like even on 275, my core did not feel there. I was a little worried because on the on 275, I definitely pushed forward on my front foot a little bit just because I didn't get a deep enough dip and drive with a confident enough core. And man, I love it. I, 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 sometimes you really do just have to do a heavier weight than what you may think uh, you're currently capable of, not in the ego way, but in the way of you know you have that strength in you. You know you've done it before. You know exactly what you should and need to be doing to get there. It's just giving your ch yourself the chance, at least the attempt, to see what can happen because at the heaviest weights you do, you will see the most innate and natural instincts when it comes to your technique and core strength because your body has no other choice than to fight back against a weight that it knows it could possibly fail and get crushed under. You know, it's literally a fight or flight movement. It's hilarious that I'm using my body's biological sense of danger against what used to be against wildlife and natural disasters uh, for the sake of putting a heavy circle over my head, you know? But I love it. It drives it twice as hard. Oh man, um, it was so solid. I, I got the triple at 295. That's what I've been chasing for. And 
I was skeptical, especially since I was sick and my core strength, it takes a little bit longer for it to come back, but dude, it's back. It's, 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 I'm not even fully prepped yet. I'm not even fully primed. There's more to be had. And that's what's so exciting. It's the fact that I know because I gave it that attempt that I gave it that maximum effort in the moment where I could have just said no, especially uh, on, during the set. I failed the third clean. I got the first two. The second one was a little shaky, but got it back up. Really good split jerks. My split jerks have never looked this good uh, consistently with heavyweight. And I caught the third one, but just I did not hold my core. You know, I, I immediately let go. And I sat there and I'm like, I know that that made me weaker in that moment. You know, I made it twice as hard to come back for that final, you know, that fourth attempt for that third rep of the set. But I knew exactly what I did wrong. I knew exactly what needed to be there. And so it's, it's sometimes when you have that, that, that immediate failure and your, your brain wants to immediately shut off and be like, all right, you're done, that's it. You gotta really push against that mental state because if you've got the technique and you, you know you can, it's, it's gonna be harder than, the, than what it could have been. But it's just the fact that if you know that you can hit it, if you just do that extra little bit of a vertical pull and a little bit faster of a dive under the bar and holding your core tighter, your delts higher, anything that can get you back up, no matter what, that is going to be what makes you a different kind of lifter than everyone else. That makes you a different kind of lifter than the you that you already are. You know, that's where the real progress comes through. Not just excelling on a day where you feel the, the greatest, but excelling on a day where you could have failed and left it there but instead overcame that immediate failure in the moment without any idea of what could or should have happened other than just getting back underneath it. That's, it's as simple as that. Um, front squat, I just wanted to have a little fun today, you know? Uh, I didn't want to focus on volume today because I knew the cleaning jerks were going to really burn me out. I'll do a, little, a bit more volume next week uh, when the cleaning jerk volume goes down. Uh, so I, I just wanted to work up on a top single of something pretty difficult for my core and my low back because I've been wanting to get a lot better at really figuring out how I can get my delts to just get that tiny bit higher so I have a, uh, a better drive through my lats that pushes into my mid back on the way up on a clean, you know, because every time I get real tired or I can't hold it anymore, my core crumbles because it's not locked in exactly where I need it to be, you know? Um, holy shit, I just saw a baby deer. Oh my lord. <laughs> Sorry, that scared the hell out of me. It's foggy. It is foggy outside, and I do not want to be the... I don't, I don't want to be responsible for that one. Oh, man. Anyway, um, decided today that it would be a lot of fun to revisit uh, my experience doing uh, not slow tempo, because I know that I do that a lot, but I write it down as slowest tempo specifically. And basically for me what that means is um, if you, while you're squatting down, you have to make yourself go as slow as you possibly can according to what your body's capable of holding, you know? Obviously, once you feel your technique start breaking, you might need to pick up the pace just slightly. But if you can sit there and think and know that even though it's way harder and you don't want to do it and you want to be impatient and just lift that weight, you have to slow yourself down even further because there's always that little bit of speed that you can take away from it, you know? And so I don't like letting the speed pick up until I feel my core breaking. And so the idea was to do slowest tempo, and then once I got to 90 degrees or like broke that little uh, barrier beyond it, I just did as hard of an explosion out of the bottom of the hole as I could to get that good, uh, that good uh, fast twitch muscle fibers in my quads, you know? Because um, doing a pause rep on a front squat, I, I enjoy it every now and then, but it's not what's gonna be able to, that's not gonna be what gets me back up out of the hole on a full clean, you know? You gotta be very explosive with it, and I never ever want to have to pause a clean you know that means my core wasn't strong enough and my technique was off um so uh that was a lot of fun got up to 345 or no 335 sorry um and i'm, I'm proud of that shit i got a a really nice solid uh 10 second descent uh before coming back out of the hole had a really good drive maybe there was a little bit more but i didn't want to this is not a week where I'm trying to absolutely kill myself doing these heavy ass weights. You know, I'm trying to feel the, the technique in the core first. And if it, if I got that maximum effort, that hard pump and that hard drive, then I, I got to make sure I keep myself humble so that I can come back and go even harder for the next heavy clean and jerk day, you know? Um, so I was very proud of it. Of course, my, I, I have pretty long legs when it comes to a front squat and a little bit of a longer torso than what would be super duper optimal, you know, like the quote unquote uh, Asian squat, because 
you know, statistically, they're uh, femur to uh, like the the <laughs> the below the, the knee and the above the knee ratios are practically the same um, a lot of the time. So it's just way easier to bounce in and out without having to use uh, as much delt and keeping your back as high as you could. But it, I, I'm, I held it very strong, and I got a way better mind muscle connection for where I want my delts to feel when I'm hitting the heaviest clean that I can in a later date. So very productive either way. Um, clean pull accessory, I decided to do, uh, I wanted to hit a little bit more volume there to really burn my CNS out at the end. So I did, without letting go of the bar uh, the entire way through, did one full rep and then one below the knee, one above the knee, and then one at the hips, just to really focus on hitting every single part of the lift, but fatiguing myself further every step of the way to make myself lock in my low back and my technique even further than what would necessarily be optimal in the first place, you know? Um, I will say, on I think on two plates, I just whipped it way too hard without really thinking about it. Low back definitely got a little stressed from that one, just to, to say the least. Um, took a couple minutes, gave it a real good stretch, uh, went a little bit slower on 315 and 365, but by the time I hit 385, 405, I, it was it was definitely there. You know, I, I don't. If you're feeling a certain kind of like pinch and poke type of pain, chill out for a minute. You know, let it really come back. It sucks to have to take a little bit more of a rest time than you may have wanted to, but it's much better to make sure and really confirm that your body is going to be able to come back and lift heavier rather than lift heavier first and then potentially get injured along the way when you could have stopped that before it even got to that point. Um, but again, it felt great. I had really good pulls. Um, by the time I got to my top set, got hyped up by the homies. It was great. It was a really fun night. Great day, man. It's been great. Physically, I got to give it a 9.65. I was feeling spectacular. You know, other than the little hiccup with the clean pulls, probably would have been a, like a 9.7, 9.75, but Gonna leave it at 9.65 just because of that little hiccup, but everything was still very confident. You know, everything was really where I wanted it to be. And even when I, when I was faced by failure, I was able to at least come back and make the absolute most of it and just love it, you know? Uh, mentally, I am gonna give it a very solid, oh, I gotta give it a 9.8. It was a great, it's been great today. It's been very, very good finally got some good time off work and I can just kind of relax and do my thing got to the gym actually fully energized for once with a, as much food as I wanted to got enough sleep all the time that I wanted to just got to relax you know and today's workout was really one that it it's one of those workouts that literally forces you to be proud and to, to be appreciative of whatever you're working toward it's this is why I love this sport so much. It doesn't happen often. You know, I tell everybody all the time, you're going to have mostly if you're passionate about this stuff, you're going to have mostly good, decent workouts, and then you're going to have some really bad and some really good, and it's typically even more rare to have those super duper good ones when you're fully primed, feel like you can PR the world, you know? And when you get those rare days, it just puts you in a mindset where no matter what failure you went through that day, whatever struggles, whatever sucky th- things you had to do that really dragged the mindset down it's you're literally not allowed to be sad <laughs> you know it's that fun and that passionate of a thing to be able to drive through that and really just love what I'm doing without any thoughts about anything else there's no worries about anything else it just it's something that really reminds me of what it means to love in the first place you know oh, I love it man my mom called me before I got to the gym today <laughs> and you know she was she was a little toasty a little uh probably a shot or two deep because she's you know she don't do great with alcohol um but she called me and she's like i just had to let you know like i'm a i'm going on <laughs> i'm going on a plane tomorrow there's a hurricane i just i i worry about you guys so much and i just want to make sure you know where my will is and you know you know we just just make sure everything's okay with you guys and i'm like mother i know you're a little toasty and a little emotional in the moment it happens i'm there too i have those moments where i'll drunk call somebody and start crying for no reason but I was just like you gotta understand it just was even though she was worrying about the worst and worrying about things that she knows she doesn't have an issue with and she knows that she's done well with you know I, she's done a beautiful job of being my mother um I just had to sit there and be like mom you gotta stop because we both know you've done fantastically there have been bumps of a hundred percent we've never always aligned perfectly you know we've had our own 
miscommunications and shitty situations. Of course. But man, that's what makes that's what makes what we do now so much better. You know, she was worrying so much about me and my brothers, about what we're doing and what we might have to do without her if anything were to happen, God forbid. And oh man, <laughs> I just couldn't help but laugh. She was like, "Don't laugh at that." And I was like, "Mom, it's funny because of how much you care. It's not a funny thing. I'm not laughing at you. I'm laughing with appreciation and love for the fact that you care so much. Because it's, it makes, sometimes you just feel silly because you remember the hardest moments in your life and you remember how tough and how awful the mindset used to be and how you just couldn't get through anything and it felt like the world was against you and there was just nothing you could do. And now you just look back and you're just like, I can't believe even some of the smallest worries that I used to have, that, that was where I came from, you know? And I couldn't be more proud of myself, my family, my loved ones, my friends, everyone I cherish in my life. The fact that we are here out of this random ambiguous life that we work with to the best of our ability. No one knew we'd get here. No one expected us to get here, but we did. And we are passionate as hell, and we are just loving life the way that we can, you know, in this very moment, in this present day. You know, by sticking together, uplifting one another, and just one foot at a time, you know? It's as simple as that. Just having fun, doing whatever you want to do. Doesn't matter what others expect you to or what the whatever social standards you think that you are supposed to uphold. You just have fun. It is so simple. If you weren't smiling, laughing, screaming your heart out, whatever you're doing, being able to talk and be passionate about anything you're doing in the day, Man, take a step back. Take a break. Breathe for a minute. Give yourself that availability and that attention to step away so that you can either walk back with twice as much passion and a new passion, a new pers- purpose, or just go towards something else. Try something new. You have no idea the million, billions of things that you could be doing right now that you've never tried before, that you never knew would have been your new greatest talent, your new greatest passion and purpose in life that gets you that raw joy and happiness. So why not try a little something new for once, you know? Or something that you haven't done in a while that you just haven't felt passionate about in so long that you haven't thought to retry it, you know? We're all grown at our own rate, and you just got to have fun with the the mind and the body that you got every single day, you know? (laughs) That's all I got. Dude, I was excited today. I'm sorry to be yelling at you guys so much, but I was feeling it. It was a great, great day. Man, we're going to make some beautiful progress in this program and I am so excited that I get to record and share with you guys. I didn't even get to mention, this is such a good workout that really forces me to remain as happy as I can because just I, nothing can piss me off when I'm this happy and this passionate about something like this. Literally on my last clean and jerk, you've already seen it, I'm sure. Um, the, I, I, some guy walked in front of me as I'm setting up. So I, t- I was about to go and I, I took a second and then relocked back in so I could see the full lift in the video. And when I go to look back, he is literally perfectly lined up in front of me right when my feet land through the split jerk. I, <laughs> it was so funny. I just had to laugh. I wasn't even mad because of how much fun I was having. And you kind of, I got to give my, I, I put myself in the mindset with that stuff that I'm the one in the way, you know, I'm the one who set up the tripod in a public gym and people are just worrying about their own lives, doing their own things. I don't know who this guy is. I don't know what he's done or what he's trying to do. So I was like, you know what? Let's just look at that and think how funny. That, that it just perfectly lined up like that. What are the odds? And then look toward the future and think, I can't wait to hit 315 for a double next week and get that perfect video that I can look back on and be like, yeah, it was worth the wait. <laughs> That's all I got, man. I, I'll be back tomorrow. I got, uh, I'll be doing a back squat variation, just something funky. Or, and then I'm going to do, what else? What am I doing first? I have a power snatch complex before the the funky back squats so you'll get to see it i'll be back you know that shit i'm always doing my best to get back in there and do do whatever feels the most fun and exhilarating because that's how you'll make the most strength just having the most fun and joy you can in whatever you're doing so i appreciate y'all hearing me out hear me yap you know i i gotta do it <laughs> especially on days like today and let me know how those lives and lists have been going love hearing about it i love hearing about it and i love you guys <laughs> I'll be back tomorrow. See you later. Bye.